This is a Love at Physics video investigating where classical physics failed and why we need quantum and modern physics. Now the first failure of classical physics that we will look at is black body curves. So we know from unit 8 that black body is a perfect emitter of radiation and we know that the black body curve looks something like that with a peak wavelength corresponding to the temperature. So we know that black bodies look like this, but if we use classical physics to work out what the shape of this graph should be, it's kind of similar at these longer wavelengths, but then it goes up and up and up until it reaches an intensity of infinity. Now, obviously nothing gives out an infinite amount of energy. So we know that something must be wrong with the classical way of looking at things. Now it turns out that the black body curve can only be explained using quantum physics. It can only be explained if this energy is being emitted not as a continuous wave, but as a stream of photons with energy hc over lambda. What that means is the amount of energy needed to just emit one photon at these very short wavelengths is so, 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 so big that it makes it very, very unlikely. So the intensity is very low. So quantum physics and the idea of waves being particles, light waves being particles called photons, is the only way we can explain black body curves. Now, the second problem that scientists faced at this time, at the beginning of the 20th century, was the model of the atom. Now, we know that the nucleus is in the middle of the atom, and there are electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Now, classical physics tells us that if a charged particle accelerates, it gives out energy. Now, if this electron is accelerating, which we know it is because circular motion says that there's a constant acceleration towards the centre of a circle, then this electron must constantly be giving out energy. If the electron is constantly giving out energy, then it should slowly spiral into the nucleus as it loses energy, and when it reaches the nucleus, it should annihilate. Electrons should not be allowed to orbit nuclei by the rules of classical physics. Now, obviously, this is wrong. We know that there are electrons. We see it if we've ever done any sort of chemical experiment. We know that there are electrons, and they interact with each other, and that's why we get chemistry at all. So what is happening here? Well, it turns out this can be explained with quantum physics as well. And the way that we can explain this very simply is that for an electron to spiral, it needs to gradually give out energy. And we know from quantum physics that it can only give out energy in the form of photons. And the photons have to be discrete packets of energy with a certain wavelength. So if we were to slowly spiral, we'd be gradually giving out energy, but that doesn't happen because of these this discrete energy of these photons. We, we have to give out energy in chunks, not gradually like this spiral. Now, it turns out, as we will see later on in this chapter, that these electrons actually form standing waves, but that's for later on in chapter 12.1. The third failure of classical physics was down to the photoelectric effect. Now, the photoelectric effect involves shining a light of a certain frequency, f, onto a metal plate. And usually, in these demonstrations, zinc is used. And what happens when you shine uh, visible light, for example, on, uh, on some zinc? Um, it's absolutely nothing. Nothing happens, nothing is emitted. However, if you shine ultraviolet light, that's light with a slightly higher frequency than visible light, then you start to get electrons being emitted immediately. 
Now, the strange thing about that is that according to classical physics, what should happen is if light is a wave, then the energy should slowly build up. And yeah, if the frequency is lower, then the light has less energy, so it should take longer, but the energy should build up in the zinc and you should start getting electrons released. However, it only releases electrons when light above a certain frequency is incident on the zinc. Now, the other strange thing is that all of these electrons all have exactly the same kinetic energy. If light was just a regular wave, then these electrons would be ejected with a total variety of kinetic energies. But they're not, and they always have exactly the same kinetic energy, which depends on the frequency of the light. Now, we know because of quantum physics now that light isn't, in fact, just a continuous wave, but it is made up of incredibly small particles called photons, and each of those has an energy HF. So now we can say that when one of these photons hits one of the electrons in the zinc, it either doesn't have enough energy to completely ionize the electron, to completely remove it from the zinc, or it does, but each time that energy, if the frequency is the same, the energy of the photon is exactly the same. And so if the energy of the photon is the same and the amount of energy needed to ionize the electron from the zinc is the same, then there's always the same amount of energy left over, which is why the electrons always have the same kinetic energy. So overall, quantum physics, again, had the answer to this challenge. That was a Love at Physics video. Uh, if you liked it and you found it helpful, please do subscribe. Thank you.